tree can be only as strong as the forest that surrounds it. And each tree performs a specific role in the health and well-being of the forest. Our tree elders have so much to teach us about relationship building and community. Who thinks this book comes from nature? Almost everyone knows that this object comes from a tree. This material represents a collaboration of ideas and exchanges, people coming together to grow and create something larger than themselves. This is the essence of my work. I get all of my book materials from the trash, discarded, abandoned. Sadly, I think this is a fitting metaphor for how we are treating our planet today. However, my work brings the book back to its natural source, the tree, to take on a new lecture and tell a new story. The forest is a living, breathing library. And my sculptures are not just trees, but a testimony to our interdependence with the environment. This transformation from tree to book and book back to tree is a kind of metamorphosis cycle, actually. I think of books as butterflies with the information within their spines like DNA, and the way the book moves within time and space, like a migration path. My artistic journey started with butterflies, the monarch butterfly that makes one of the longest migrations in the world, flying all the way down to the Michoacan forest in Mexico. Each butterfly has its own individual migration path. They don't fly together. They meet in this harmonious forest as a community, listening to their instinct. How do they know where or how? I decided I had to go there to dance with them. It was up a mountain. I thought I would never arrive. Looking at the forest floor, all of a sudden, I saw the shadow of a butterfly fly into mine and become one with mine. I looked up and saw thousands of butterflies fluttering around me. It was at this very moment that I knew I wanted to devote my artistic voice to sharing the inexplainable wonders of nature. I'd like to take you all on a migration, a journey to connect through art. Are you ready to fly? So let's go. Why not? take flight into the unknown. Our journey begins in the oldest favela in Rio, in a curious yellow house with a moon overlooking all the city and doors that open to endless possibilities. Turning the corner to walk up the stairs of the favela, I felt very scared with bullet holes in the walls and men with guns staring me down. I didn't know how I was going to work with the children of the favela. I was nervous to have other people creating my work. What if it wasn't as beautiful or what I had imagined? <laughs> However, it turns out that art is a means to break these limits. 
It was after the first day of working with the children, they all gathered out on the front porch to play. They were banging on the front door. Rachel, Rachel! I went to open the door slowly, and they all came bombarding in, knocking me over, hugging me, saying, Rachel, we want to make the trees. <laughs> so, well, we did. And instead of communicating verbally, because our verbal communication was complicated, we were jumping around, throwing the pages in the air. I will never forget the richness of this experience. Despite the cultural barrier, the age barrier, the language barrier, these people literally became my family and the favela my home. This was an aha moment for me. The moment I realized I wanted to invite others into my creative practice that art is about sharing a collective creative experience and that the objects we're creating aren't important. They're mere traces of these beautiful moments shared together. <laughs> Why not use art to celebrate collectivity and inclusivity? Our journey continues. Our next destination takes us to Verdun, France, a small city where I had the opportunity of working with the retired community of women. This installation represents the monarch butterfly forest with the pages flying in the air, marking the migration paths flying around the tree, floating seven meters in the air, and revealing its secret story in the tree rings. The flying books were like the women who came together to create this piece, both strong and delicate. I'll be honest, when I first met these extraordinary women, I think they thought I was a little bit crazy to tear up books. But maybe you thought the same thing when I walked into this talk and tore out a page. <laughs> but once they got into the process, they never let go. It was only at the end that I understood the magnitude of their personal experience with the work. At the opening, each woman walked in. They were searching for the text in the pages that were flying, trying to find the pages that they had glued together. They were astonished that after only gluing a few pages together, it could become this entire world, this masterpiece. One woman came up to talked to me, then couldn't. She burst into tears of joy. I, I didn't need to hear her words. I already understood. This work doesn't belong to me. It belongs to everyone. It belongs to the world. Why not use art? to explore natural beauty. Our journey continues. However, our next destination exists in a place, a spiritual place deep inside yourself to explore your inner environment, your inner tree. This work explores the body as a majestic natural being, a hybrid connection between humans and trees. The growth process of this work was a journey of its own. 
the material. The red page, a substance in which all of nature can be represented. The body of the tree, the red that flows within all beings, also the red root chakra connecting us to the earth. It's sound quality, like wind, like water, like fire. When the paper is wet with glue, it gives off an earthy, organic odor. And the touch, like the silky essence of a leaf. We were making thousands of roots every day, laying them down to dry like farmers. One evening to experiment, I decided to film the roots as they were drawing. And this next part is what I didn't expect. When I watched the video, I noticed that the roots were actually moving, evolving. The tree was in the process of rebirth. How special it was to witness this. I have never felt so close to nature. We then took the roots and carefully intertwined them. Each tiny detail was like an infinite universe of root networks. These are like the tiny details that we often overlook in life that we should explore more deeply. And if you look carefully, you might notice that the magic of the monarch is still within. Why not use art to explore oneself more deeply? Art is connection. Art is essential because it is a universal language that creates hope, adds positivity to the world, and brings us closer to the essential values of life, like coming back to our roots, connecting in harmony, and preserving our natural world. Find your natural inner voice. How will you use your creativity to connect? Let's all stand up. Close your eyes. Imagine you are a tree. Feel your inner veins circling around in your body, connecting your interior organs. Feel the strong presence your feet have with the ground. Imagine that your veins, your roots, begin to sprout out of your feet, traveling deep into the earth. Imagine these roots begin to also connect with the other roots in this room, creating a strong root network. Your arms, your limbs, your brain. Lift up your arms. Allow them to caress the air, but also allow them to connect with the other branches within this room.
Become the forest where diversity is essential. You may open your eyes. We have arrived. We have just created our own unique forest. You are all artists here. Art is everywhere. Art is in the simple gestures of connecting we do every single day. At the exit of this room, you will find some piles of books from my studio. I invite you all to open one of the books and take out a page. Use both the material of this page and the text as a seed to connect. Thank you. Thank you.